For this tips and tricks, I want to talk about path remapping. Path remapping is one of those things that's really important, especially if you're working in mixed environments or you're working in a remote environment. You know, what you see is the way that each operating system handles volumes is different than one or the other. On Mac and Linux, they're similar, but there's still some differences, and there's definitely some instances where you would want to physically remap them. Uh, another instance is Windows uses a different scheme to, to map drives. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple different ways that you can remap drives inside of Nuke and talk to some of the pros and cons of each. The first one is inside your preferences under your general tab, you actually have a path substitutions GUI input box. So what the, the way that works is basically you would add an instance. Oops, I hit it twice. So it, say we have an OX, OSX mount point. That'll be slash volumes and then whatever your drive name is. So say that's drive A. On Windows, that could either be interpreted as a SharePoint or as a mapped drive. So say that's the P drive slash slash and then drive a and on linux you might see mount point and then drive a what this does is when you hit save on this and you open a script that was created on a windows machine and has mapped all of the files with this naming convention Nuke will automatically rewrite that as this, or if you open it on a Linux, it'll rewrite it as this. This is really, you know, a really fast, easy way to open files and not have to reconnect files, or you know, open open Nuke scripts and not have to reconnect files inside the script to get it to work. Um, so if you're working in a mixed environment, this is a pretty decent way to do it. Um, if you want to do it more system wide, so that you don't have to deploy that at every single Nuke station. There are some ways you can do it Pythonically, and I'm gonna just briefly touch on some of those right now. So we'll hit cancel. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do some simple path remapping using Python tools to actually find replace. Um, another way, and we'll go to the desktop here, I have my one of my .nuke folders that I use to do some path remapping. So the init py, oops, that's the wrong one. So shared tools. So I actually map from one, my main .nuke folder to a system or a network setup. So in there, I have my own init py. That init py, I'm doing a couple different things. So here, I've actually created a a routine that determines what the system platform is, and based on the system platform, it sets a variable that changes the file pathing, and that's really nice for like building Python tools that are mixed mixed environment and allowing you to set folder defaults and some other things at a system level without having to implement them on local machines. As far as path remapping goes, another way to do it is using a file name filter. And a file name filter basically lets you do a find replace. So in this case, say we have a Windows mapping where, you know, I have a client and I work via VPN, they're on a Windows server and that is mapped to you know the P drive and then their projects live directly in there. Well I have multiple clients and I have a little bit different folder structure so for me it actually works better to mount my project drive and then projects and then a client folder and then the projects inside that. So using a file name filter I can catch this aspect of it and then have it apply this path where this becomes really really useful is if i save the file with this naming format my nuke will know where that file actually lives but then i can send that file back to my client and it's automatically pointed at the right file they don't have to do any relinking on their end so i can actually submit to their render farm from deadline or from whatever render manager they're using over the vpn and it will render like the file was submitted locally from a local machine you know, this is really huge in terms of making that transition from remote work much easier. And file name filters are a big part in making that work smoothly. You know, and another thing with this, you know, with this function here where I'm checking to see what the platform is, 
you can actually see here how I'm using that. So volume map is the variable I create and I use volume map to append to the path and that lets it redirect appropriately whether it's Windows, Mac or Linux.